Hello and welcome to this video on the OSI model. The OSI model is a very fundamental model when it comes to uh, communication and um, there are a lot of really good resources about it online and uh, this video is mostly to put it in context to uh, our usual usage. <coughs> there are seven layers to the OSI model uh, from the physical layer up to the application layer. Uh, what we usually do when we work with it or at least when I do I draw a line at uh, between uh, layers four and five. So it's because down here it is mainly a network problem and up here it's mainly a software problem. So network engineers will be mainly down here and software engineers will be mainly up here. The reason that is so is that the difference between software and network people is that the network people will have multiple devices and their task is to ensure that uh, the data as a stream gets piped to the software and software people will process all the data and then ship some data that the network people will handle to be sent to another device. So for uh, most network people, they are just focused on IP addresses and so on, where the software people will be handling uh, the protocols, um, which, uh, like SSH or HTTP and such. Okay. Um, the something like um, let's do um, 802.3 Ethernet. It resides approximately here, where we have the physical connection in um, the. Um, um, in, in the 802.3 uh, Ethernet example, we have uh, the cables and the, let's call it the signals. When you have uh, the physical layer, it's all about the physics of transmitting data from one thing to another. And um, when we go to the heart, uh, to the data link, we actually, I usually say that when you go from layer one to two, you are converting the signals into bits. That's a good way of thinking it. But here you actually have, um, um, let's call it data, and you will have some addressing. And that is a MAC address when it comes to uh, Ethernet. Uh, we also have uh, uh, the, the device that we use for this is called a switch. Um, and then when you continue, then we stop working with Ethernet and then we start working with other protocols, which is not Ethernet, it's just something we built on top. So when you have that the physical is handling sending signals from one device to another, data link is about uh, making meaning of these signals and just having data between two devices <clears throat> on, or, or multiple devices based on the uh, physical address. So they are talking directly to each other. When we get to the network layer, we are doing um, IP, um, internet protocol, IP version 4, IP version 6. Those addresses resides here where you can go from one subnet to another use, uh, by going through a router. So you have using the ethernet part to talk between your device and the router and the router will then ship it on. Um, and here we, this is where we do routing there's routers reside there, and the transport layer is, uh, in our context, TCP and UDP. And what they do, uh, actually only TCP does this, um, they do what we usually refer to as multiplexing. There are two things to this. One of them is that when you want to send a megabyte over some sort of physical connection that can only handle packages or packets of 500 bytes, then you need to chop it into pieces. And then at the receiving end, you need to put them back together. This is actually what uh, TCP does. And it also has this feature that you can have a lot of uh, programs waiting for data, and then it gets shipped to the right program. We use ports for that in the TCP world. Um, it's important to note that this is a, I wanna write, oh yeah, we just need to add here that this would be the physical addresses we have here and this would be the logical addresses because this OSI model 
is general. It is not specific to Ethernet and such. This is just the normal use case for network people to do that. But we have a lot of other standards. We have something like IS-232 being a serial connection. It can handle point to point. So they will not have any MAC addresses, but it will have the entire stack anyway. You could put IP and routing on top of it if you like. We did that a long time ago. We don't do that anymore. You can exchange it with um, Bluetooth and then run IP on top of Bluetooth. Um, there are other, uh, especially IoT uh, wireless um, protocols that resides down here in the uh, hardware level. And uh, we can also have something like uh, IS-485, which is a serial connection also, which supports MAC addresses. So we can exchange this part, the hardware part, with whatever, and then build stuff on top of that. Uh, something like uh, I2C -square has a 7-bit addressing, so the physical address, they will not call it a MAC address, but it will be a physical address so that you can have multiple devices on the same subnet um, and they can address each other using the physical address on the device. Um, so the OSI model is super general. We have a physical layer that makes sure that we have an, some sort of electrical or optical connection between two devices. We have the data link, which ensures connectivity between two devices and with the concept of a subnet where the different devices are allowed to talk directly to each other. They, and then we have the network layer where they must talk to some intermediary device in order to uh, get beyond their own subnet. Uh, this is the routers. Um, and then you have the transport layer, which is responsible for taking a data stream, chopping it into appropriate sizes, shipping it, and when it's receiving, putting it back together correctly. That would be the first four layers, and then the top layers would be for the software engineers to handle. Yes, that was a quick introduction to the uh, OSI model. Um, thank you for listening.